In the beginning of the parasha, the first two verses, it says, Vayikel Moshe et kol edad b'nei Yisrael, vayomer alem, ele advarim asher tziva Adonai la'asot otam, sheshet yamim ta'aseh melacha, vayom ha'shvi'i, yeh lachem kodesh, shabbat, shabbaton la'adonai, kol ha'oseh bo melacha, yumat. Lo teva'u esh bekol moshvotechem, beyom ha'shabbat. So the first three verses is again the reminder of the mitzvah of Shabbat. Moshe assembled the entire children of Israel and said to them, these are the things that Hashem commanded. Six days your work, work may be done, but on the seventh day shall be holy for you, a day of complete rest for Hashem. Whoever does work on it shall be put to death. He's not worrying about if he's going to hurt anybody's feelings. Oh, listen, I was used to playing football every Shabbat. I was used to selling my shoes on Shabbat. I was used to selling cars on Shabbat. Wait, now you're going to kill me? Yes. He's not worried. He's not, there's no like a commentary. Oh, Moshe Rabbeinu really felt bad when he said, if you violate Shabbat, Hashem's going to kill you, or he's going to kill you, or one of the two, whatever happens first. There's no feeling bad. Why? It's Hashem's commandment. Which bottom line is, Rabotai, the reason for every single one of the 613 mitzvot we have in the Torah is because Hashem said so. That's the real reason. Every mitzvah. Every single mitzvah. Yes, there are certain ta'amim, meaning there are certain flavors or different benefits that Hashem allows us to see and understand from observing Shabbat or kosher or tarat mishpacha or all of those other things. But in reality, that's not the reason of why we do it. So if, let's say, for example, a person doesn't work, he's retired. He's retired, he doesn't work. So technically, seven days a week is a vacation for him. He still has to keep Shabbat. If a person, if a person doesn't like meat, doesn't like it, so when he eats it, it's like he's only doing it because uh, you told him that on Yom Tov and on Shabbat, in order for you to really celebrate, you have to eat meat. Does he still have to eat kosher? He's already doing you a favor that he's eating meat because he hates meat. Yes, he has to eat kosher. Why? Because it has nothing to do with whether you like it or not. It has to do with the fact that Hashem said so. And the same thing goes with all of the mitzvot. All of the mitzvot. It doesn't matter whether you realize that tarat mishpacha, family purity, and having separation for approximately half the month, and not touching any woman that's not your wife, not even in her hand, not even touching a hand. That's not your wife. Not to shake hands, not to hug, not to kiss, not to nothing. Unless she's your wife or your mom, not allowed to touch her. And even that has to be done in modesty. Meaning you can't start, like a lot of these people, that I don't know, they call themselves religious, but they have pictures, these so-called rabbis or religious people, they have pictures on the internet with them and their wives, like hugging, like they're like, you know, they're like hugging, kissing on the internet. Like, I don't understand. Where does it say in the Torah that such a behavior is allowed? <coughs> it's completely immodest. But they're doing it with the long beard that reaches the floor and the hat that reaches the sky. So, Rabotai, we have to double check everything. Double check everything. And the reality is that whether you realize that it's beneficial for a couple to have family purity or not is irrelevant. You're commanded to do it because God said so. That's the only reason. That's the only reason for all of the mitzvot. So now, Moshe Rabbeinu is telling us again for the twelfth time, twelve times it mentions it in the Torah that if we violate Shabbat, we get a death penalty. Twelve times. Why, well, wasn't enough first eleven? Again we need? Yes, again. He's not worried about somebody being offended. Okay, we heard already 11 times. No, you ever have like one of these people tell you the same thing 500 times? Isn't it annoying? If it's your wife or your husband or your kid, you know, little kids, they tend to say the same thing 5,000 times. Abba, 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 Abba. By the time she finishes, you don't even want to be called Abba. You want to be called Ima already. So maybe she... <laughs> enough. But I want, I want candy, 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 candy. 5,000 times. Drives you crazy. So Moshe knew. You told us 11 times already. Why are you saying it again? Number 12. To make sure you got it. Each one of the times has a different significance to it. 
in this particular time where he says, you shall not kindle fire, this is one of the 39 restrictions on Shabbat. Now let the light fire. But then you see that the rest of the parasha goes in a completely different direction. The rest of the parasha goes to the construction of the tabernacle. So we have, keep Shabbat. We have, don't violate it by lighting fire. And then we have the rest of the entire parasha. Hey, by the way, the Bet HaMikdash of the desert, this is how you build it. Oh, shouldn't we have more mitzvot of Shabbat? There's another 38 restrictions. Since you're already mentioning Shabbat 12 times, mention the restrictions at least. No. We have to show you where do we get these restrictions. Where do we get them from? This pasha. All 39 restrictions, things that you're not allowed to do on Shabbat, come from this pasha. Parashat Vayekel, these are all the things that we did to build the Bet HaMikdash, whether the one in the desert called the Tabernacle, or the real Bet HaMikdash that we had in Yerushalayim, the first one and the second one. All 39 activities that were done to build it are forbidden on Shabbat. To remind us that even to build the house of God is not allowed on Shabbat. Because logically you would think, hey, Mitzvah, okay, uh, kosher, I understand kosher, this, everything I understand. But to do something for God, you must be allowed to do something for God. Why? The whole thing is for God. So you must be allowed to build a house for God on Shabbat. No. Shabbat is even more important than that. Shabbat is even more important than the house of God. Let me know uh, what you think and make sure to share it because other people need to learn too.